and grace in our lives. It is in your name we pray. Amen. And I want to begin with birthdays. Are there any birthdays coming up in this week? So Bruce's nephew, Brendan Gallagher, is 38, and he's, uh, he's, his birthday's on tomorrow, the 31st, and he's studying in Ukraine? Okay. So two, two things. Stan. Okay. Is, is that Deborah. Deborah? Yeah, happy birthday to Stan. His birthday was on January 18th. <laughs> Are there any other birthdays or anniversaries that you'd like to, to share? I know Jenny's would probably want to say Melissa's birthday is on February 4th, right? It is. Uh, okay. Uh, if you think of one throughout, throughout worship, uh, let us know. We'd like to, to celebrate. Uh, are there any announcements that sh- anyone would like to share with the community? Kimberlyn. Okay, so anyone in here and worshiping uh, at home, if you um, would be interested in helping with Sunday school, um, I'm helping to organize those Sundays, and I encourage anyone. um, Pastor Alex does an amazing job of creating the lessons. Uh, So those are already done. All you have to do is to um, be there with the kiddos and help um, to bring that to life for them and it's super fun I enjoy being down there with them Um, but if we can figure out a schedule in which we can all work together um, so if you have even the slightest inkling to want to help please come talk to me and I would love to get that set so we can all help provide Sunday school for our kiddos thank you Kimberlyn and, it, and it's just, uh, try it out. I just invite you to try it out. Like today, they're, they're going to be doing something with, with popcorn and throwing it. And so we can have fun, and it can be what, whatever you would want. You don't have to stick to the lesson plan. You can adapt it uh, to whatever you would like to do. Are there any other announcements? All right, I'll share two. The one, you might notice the big... Uh, big uh, bulletin board that's right outside. You can see the back of it from here, and it says, Are You One of 100? And it's uh, the youth group fundraiser for the la- one of the, the last fundraisers that they'll do for uh, their mission trip in, in the summer. And it corresponds. Uh, if you're number one, it'd be you would put uh, a $1 bill in the envelope, uh, and then they're gonna, and then you write them some encouraging words. There's spots in the envelope where you can you can write to them, uh, to and then and then that will be everything will be used to their their mission trip. We're we're so close to getting everyone to go without spending uh, money, and that's what that's that's been the goal the whole time. And I think that that's a pretty uh, cool thing to to do and a, and a witness as you as a community and, and supporting them. And if you're worshiping online. Uh, it's set up the, so you can also uh, participate in that way online too. Uh, if you click click on the, the link in the the Facebook page, also the the chili fundra- the chili cookoff is next Sunday, right? Uh, it, and it's a uh, ten dollars, right, Jenny? Okay, and so what I know about chili is growing up with my dad is that everybody thinks they have the best chili in the world, right? Like, I, I think my chili is pretty good, uh, but then I try someone else's chili, I'm like, wow, my chili can, has room to grow, right? <laughs> and so, 
Uh, if you want to think, if you think your chili is better than mine, I invite you just to come and, and try it out. And even if you're not doing the, the competition, uh, there's going to be plenty uh, of chili for everyone to uh, eat next Sunday. And so come and, uh, and enjoy some fellowship with one another. And then the, the week after that, on Saturday, it's Saturday the 12th is bingo and that starts at five o'clock with with dinner and then bingo starts at 5 30. it's a it's a pretty amazing event and i believe jenny is still accepting uh if you want to to donate to the prizes uh they always have like really amazing prizes and uh except don't uh don't show up if you want the golf prizes because i know like the past two years i've gotten all the golf prizes and i've got to golf uh, for free at some pretty cool courses, and so uh, just come and, and have, a, have, have a good good time, and I think it will be a blast. Uh, will you please stand as we sing the opening song, Spirit of the Living God. Let's continue to worship by singing, Here I Am, Lord.
Let's continue to worship by singing, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. may be seated. Will you please enter into a spirit of prayer with me by saying the unison prayer together. God of love, you have shown us a holy way and a weird way to live. We confess that we often travel down the path that is broad, normal, and easy. May the power of the Holy Spirit strengthen us so our ability to love you and love others expands. Empower us to love all of your creation without limits. Amen. I, I, want, to, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to invite you to share any prayer requests that you want the congregation to surround in prayer in the coming week, uh, if you'd want to. We have Jane and then Claire. I would like to request prayers for a lifelong friend, Evelyn Eckhoff Williamson. She lives at Pittsburgh, Kansas. And we are lifelong friends, but we are also sisters under the skin because we both suffer from autoimmune diseases. 
And Evelyn has now in her third week of fighting Omicron. And because of the autoimmune diseases she has, they've had to take her off her drugs to manage her autoimmune diseases and put her on steroids. And she is really struggling and she needs the prayers. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, Jane, we'll keep Evelyn in our, our prayers. Um, my friend Daly, her, um, she, her papa is in the hospital with COVID, so she would like to have prayers for her papa. Is Daly's papa, Claire? Uh, my mom just got news this morning that a, a cousin of hers, Shirley Snyder, passed away last night. And growing up, she and Shirley were very close, and so keep her family in prayers. That was, that was Shirley Snyder, Kathy? Are there any others that anyone would like to share? Um, well, my mom's on the prayer list prayer list, Mary Haycock. We go Wednesday to talk to a surgeon um, to determine her heart doctor wants her to have at least one, if not two, valve replacements. Um, she turns 90 on the 13th of February. And that was Mary, right, Andy? Yeah. Are there any other prayer requests that you'd like to share with the community? Uh, I, I've been asked to share one that's really, uh, really hard to share, and some of you probably already know. Uh, I know at least a couple of you do know. And so uh, here, here's my best shot at doing this without uh, getting emotional. And so Tina Bledsoe uh, has been diagnosed with uh, advanced stage lower GI cancer, and it has spread to her... Uh, hips and, and bones. And so uh, she started radiation this past week and, uh, and on February 9th she will start chemo treatment. And so if you could please keep uh, Tina, Warren, Tara, Kylie, Logan, Derek, uh, all the Bledsoe's in, in your prayers, uh, write them encouraging letters. Uh, I'm sure they would appreciate that. Claire. That's what I just said, Claire. Okay. Yeah, and so I, I know, like Claire knows, she's a third grader, so uh, that's what she, she was saying as, as well. And so if you can surround every, every one of those uh, people, Jane's friend, Evelyn, uh, Daly's papa, the family and friends of, of Shirley, uh, Mary, Tina, and all those that are on the back of your bulletin, uh, there's a whole list uh, of people in our community or people who, and who, who people know from our community. Uh, if you just would like be conscious every week, I, I have that prayer list uh, somewhere where I see it every single day. And, uh, and I pray for, for everyone uh, that's on that list. I just want to invite you uh, to do the same. So will you please uh, join me in prayer. Oh God, as we, we come together in this time of prayer today. We, we give you thanks. Uh, we give you thanks for uh, being, being together and, and being able to, to gather together. I think if anything, this, this past two and a half years that has taught us that uh, this is something that we shouldn't take for granted, oh God. And I just give you thanks for the ability to, to look out and to, to see people, uh, even if it is tears, and, and, but I also en enjoy the, their smiles and interacting with them. Oh God, there, there are a lot on the hearts of, of everyone gathered, both here on, in, in person and online. And so we pause in this moment to uh, voice what, it, what is on our heart to you in this moment of silence, oh God, Please hear our prayers.
Oh God, we know you heard what was just voiced to you silently. God, today uh, we, we specifically a ask for prayers for, for Jane's friend, Evelyn, that you work through the, the doctors and medical team that are, are, are caring for her, that they provide healing for her. They r restore her to, to strength and sustain her with the treatment that they have decided is, is best for her body. God, we, we pray for uh, daily, Daly's Papa, that you also work through the, the medical team that is caring for him, that uh, we pray that you lead and guide them in the care that they provide so they can restore his health. God, uh, we also lift up Mary, uh, Mary Heacock who, and, and uh, Andy and Pat as they, they take her to her appointment that you may uh, guide and lead the doctors in, in what is the best way uh, and forward for, for Mary's body, whether it is one stint or two stints, so that she can, uh, can, can live into the person you have created her to be. Oh God, we, we pray for, for the, the family and friends of Shirley Snyder. Uh, may you give them comfort, surround them with your peace and, and love, and, and be with them as they remember how uh, Shirley ha has impacted uh, their lives and, and changed them to, and create and help them to be the people they are today. Oh God, we, we ask that you surround Tina Bledsoe and the, all the Bledsoe family, the, the friends, the, the family, the, the students that she has, has shaped and, and mentored. We ask that you work through the, the radiation and, and chemotherapy to uh, eliminate the, the cancer in her body, oh God. We, we pray that you uh, comfort her, uh, give her peace, strengthen her, and sustain her on her journey as she fights. Oh God, it is in all in your name that we pray all of these things in the same way that Jesus taught his disciples to pray and teaches us to pray, oh God, by praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Will you please rise for the reading of scripture from the Gospel of John. And we're going to read chapter 12, verses 42 and 43. And so it reads, Yet at the first, at the same time, many even among the leaders believed in him, but because of the Pharisees, they would not openly acknowledge their faith for fear they would be put out of the synagogue, for they loved human praise more than praise from God. And the second reading of scripture comes from 1 Peter, and it's chapter 1, and it's the second part of the verse, 16b, and it says, Be holy, because I am holy. And so we ask that God, may God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of God's word. Amen. And so I invite uh, a kindergarten through sixth grade if they would want to go with Kimberlyn for Sunday school. And I bet you're going to have a lot of fun. Will you please join me in prayer? God, as we dig into the scripture today from the Gospel of John and from 1 Peter, may it, uh, may it unpack a, a, a new truth, uh, some wisdom that you are uh, speaking to us and leading, for, leading us to discover. Amen. And so if you've been with us or been watching with us the last two weeks, you know what we've been talking about, right? We've been talking about being weird, right? Uh, and so we, the, the whole time it's been framed around this, this, these, this two sentence that if you want to do and have what normal people have, do what normal people do. And if you want to do what few people have, 
do what few people do. And so the, the key scripture for this whole uh, four or five week uh, series is from the Gospel of Matthew, and it's verse 7, 13 through 14. And if you want to follow along, the, the words will be on your screen. And it says, Jesus says, Enter through the narrow grate, for the wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it, but small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, and only few find it. And so in, in Jesus' teaching, he, he clearly shows us that there are two different ways, right? There, there's this one way over here, and this road is broad. Uh, it's, it's big, and it's where most people travel. Uh, but we hear from Jesus' teaching that, unfortunately, this road right here leads to destruction, and often the, the, there's crowds of people filing into this. And then Jesus said, there is another road over here, and, it, and it's narrow. But the good news is, is that this road leads to life. But the bad news is that only few people have the courage to leave, lead the, leave the broad road over here and go on the narrow road. And so when you do leave the crowd, when you do choose to leave this large group of people, which is where most normal people live, uh, we uh, go on and, and experience new and exciting things. And you know, I used to find comfort over here in, in being with the crowd. And, and I thought about it last Sunday as I was leaving the, the Chiefs game. And you know, <laughs> Everybody kind of files out and goes their, their one way, but there's always people that are trying to find the quicker way to get to their car. And no matter what, the quicker way you, you get to the car, or maybe there were people who uh, didn't stay for the whole game and they left early and missed what was happened, but everybody seems to be comfortable in, in finding a way. And I, the Chiefs illustration kind of is a way. Sometimes uh, the large group of people, the, the wide road, gets it right, right? Like sometimes they get it right, but a majority of the time, it's going to lead to destruction. And so Jesus is saying to the disciples, he's saying to us, is to get on the narrow road that leads to right, leads to life. Because when we, we stay on this uh, we, we, when we're on the broad road over here and, and we, when we exit and we start to go on the narrow road, people might say that you are doing things a little bit weird. A little bit weird. But what I do now is I take comfort. If someone tells me that I'm doing something weird, I'm like, right on. I, I love it. Uh, tell me I'm weird. Uh, have, have anybody's taken like the Financial Peace University, like Dave Ramsey, one of his big going words is, is be weird. Like be so weird that your kids think you're going to sell them next. Like that's how weird you should be with, with money and how intensely you should uh, try to try to free, free yourself from like debt and everything. But beyond that, there is freedom in being weird. There is freedom in living into the dreams God has for you and not being confined by the limitations that we have and we put on ourselves when we compare ourselves to others and, we, and, and that we, when we live this life. And so there is freedom, in, and we talked about time. We talked about how there's freedom when we no longer feel overwhelmed and we invite people in to, to shoulder the burden. We don't have a to-do list, and we actually rest and take time for ourselves. We talked about how there is, is freedom when we, we live, when we don't have, uh, when we create margin in our day. So if something comes along, uh, it doesn't derail what we might have planned. So creating margin, not just in our day, but in also in our, in our finances. And so uh, we, we've talked about how, what the Bible teaches us about time, what the Bible teaches us about money, and I threw in the, the one sermon when uh, we were quarantined in our house was about kindness, because somehow kindness ha is, is kind of weird nowadays when everybody seems to be uh, spewing uh, venom at one another. And today we're going to talk about relationships and what it looks like to be weird in a relationship. And so my mom and, and dad, they tried to drive 
this into my heart when I was growing up. Maybe your parents kind of told you the same thing, but my parents used to say, it's okay to be different. Has anybody, if you're a parent, have you ever said that to your kid? Or if you're a kid, have you ever heard it? Yeah, I, I see some out there. And so my different was, uh, one of the different things that I did uh, was when I would go out and shoot baskets when we lived in Ankeny, Iowa. And so we lived in Ankeny, Iowa uh, until I was in first grade. And then in second grade, we moved to Olathe. I would go out and I was a huge Iowa State fan, uh, partly because my dad and my whole family's Iowa State fan. So I had, I was decked out in like an Iowa State shirt, uh, Iowa State uh, red, red uh, shorts that went down to about right here with little cyclones all over. I had a picture, but I, I spared you uh, this. And then I, it was really cool because I wore socks that went right below my knee, and then I had some red Chuck Taylors. But the thing that was weird about that and shooting baskets was I always wore a batting glove. Whenever I wanted to go outside and shoot baskets outside in our goal in our driveway, I always put on my batting glove. Uh, I, I don't know why I did that, but it was one of those uh, a creature, I was, I was a creature of habit, and that's what all, all I did. I'm pretty sure maybe it was because like, I, I naturally have like really small hands, and it helped me grip the basketball better so I could shoot it uh, uh, more accurately, but I don't know what it was. But my parents used to always say, it's okay to be different, Alex. And, and what I hope is that, that you, uh, and you'll embrace this truth. If you've heard it before, I hope that you embrace this truth and that not only is it okay to be different, but, but when you're led by the Spirit of God, it is way, way, way better to be different. Because normal is often broke, normal is often overwhelmed, normal is often uh, some kind of, of severed relationship, whether it's with your partner or a friend or a family. Normal is fear. And, and quite honestly, normal is often cloaked in some kind uh, of sin. And so uh, there is, uh, there is this, this way that seems right to us as human but in the end, it leads to death. Normal is where the crowd is going, and, and I just pray for each one of you today that, that you have the courage to exit this broad path over here and get on the narrow road of following Jesus. And I can guarantee that normal people will call you weird, but I also know that, that you won't care because normal isn't working and being different is not just okay. It's way, like, it, it's, it's better. Like, I really think being weird is better. And so we heard today that, that God, what God said in 1 Peter 1.16, and it's God told us to be something. Does anybody remember what God told us to be? Holy, yeah. And so uh, God said for us to be holy. And why? Because I am holy. God said to be holy. And now, maybe for me, that, uh, maybe like me, that word holy might put you back a little bit. And, and so for years and years of my life, the word holy was like very intimidating to me. Like when, when I hear, hear this passage of scripture, it kind of still says like, wow, like that's kind of intimidating. I'm supposed to be holy. What does, what does that mean? How, where do I even begin to be holy? And so, like, I thought, like, of, of, as, as a priest being holy, uh, a, a pastor that I didn't really talk with as being holy, I thought of someone who is really super religious as being holy, but I used to think, like, no, like, I, that, me? Not me. Like, like, God, you know what I've thought. Uh, God, you know what, what I've done. Like, I can't be holy uh, and so, but I want to, what I want to do today is to give you a little bit of more context of what this passage of scripture actually means. What it, does it mean to be holy? And so you'll see up here uh, the Greek word that, the, that holy comes from, and it's, so, it's pronounced hagios, and besides holy, you can see that, th that this word means to be uh, pure, which is still kind of like, oh my gosh, like, 
here. Like that, that's that's a hard that's a hard something hard to shoot for. But I, I really love the, the other definitions to be set apart and to be different. And so God says to be holy because I am holy. God says in this 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 world where there's lots of things that are, are going wrong, be a beacon and a light to point people back to what is right. God says to be set apart. God says you're not normal. You're going to be different than the crowd. Don't be like the rest of the world. Be different. Be different. And here, here's the key uh, for, for all of us who are are seriously following Jesus when you're not when you're more than j- just a Christian in a name when you truly want to give God all all the glory honor and praise and and follow all of Jesus's teaching and God's teaching Jesus will lead you off the broad path and onto the narrow one where you where you be weird and you're being weird not just for for weird sake not just to be weird because you want to be weird but your goal in being weird is to please God and when you're striving and, and make this your daily pattern of life to to please God God will set you apart you will be different the rest of the world will call you weird and the moment you leave the broad path and go on to the narrow one you're going to be smacked in the face with people who, are go- who might make fun of you, they might snicker at you, and they might ask you, where are you going? Stay with us over here. Stay with us. Here's what, what normal people do. Here's what the large group of people do. Don't be different. Don't be weird. You used to be cool. I've heard that a couple times, uh, not in this context, though, but you used to be cool, stay with us. And oftentimes you'll be hit with the pressure to, to stay over here when you so badly want to be over here. You, you can hear and, and feel God saying, come on, I have these big dreams for you, I have these adventures for you, come over here. But I want you to know that, that you're not alone. You see, David, in the Old Testament, uh, he, he wrote this in Psalm 69, 9 through 12. And G- God, David said this to God. He said, God, my p- passion for your house has consumed me. God, passion for your house has consumed me. Passion for what matters to you has consumed me. And so I love this part about David when you read the Psalms, the sense of God, David saying, God, I want to serve you and, and you alone. This is my passion. I want my whole life to count for you, God. I want to worship you all day long. Passion, I want to have passion for the things that matter to you. That's what matters to me. And it has consumed me. And then David goes on, because often in da- in the, when David writes in the Psalms, you get the yin, and then you get the yang, right? But the good thing about David is you don't have to guess like what he is feeling. And, and David goes on to say, And the insults of those who insult you, God, have fallen on me. In, in other words, David saying, God... I am so much on your side that when people shoot arrows at you, they're going to hit me because I am right here with you. And so David goes on uh, in verse 10, it says, when I weep and fast, when I weep and fast, and we see this is a rhythm of David's life, uh, and he did it a lot for, for, for the state of the nation. When, when I weep and I fast, David says, they scoff at me. When I dress in burlap to show sorrow, what do people do? Everybody, what do they do? They make fun of me. And then in verse 12, uh, David says, uh, God, I am the favorite topic of the town gossip and all the drunks sing about me. Wow. And so if you think you're doing something weird... Maybe you haven't been weird enough until the, the people in, in the bars start to sing at you, right? 
So if you think you're weird, maybe uh, take it up a notch so people start to sing about you, because you can get a lot weirder. But in all, in all honesty, the, the, the need to please others often puts a wedge in between doing what God wants us to do and being normal. And so we read today in the Gospel of John that the most religious people of the day, the Pharisees, regularly sought the praise of people rather than God. They pr- often they prayed long and, and showy prayers and, the, and they fasted in, in front of others and talked about like how long they had, had fasted in front of others to kind of look super spiritual. And they were obsessed with what the public thought about them. And then what we, we know is that some uh, of the people who also followed Jesus, some of the disciples were kind of, of sucked into this, this rhythm and, and pattern of the Pharisees. And so we read this in the Gospel of John. Yet at the same time, many even among the leaders believed in him. But because of the Pharisees, they would not openly acknowledge their faith for fear they would be put out of the synagogue. For they loved human praise more than praise from God. And it's that, that, that last part that I really want to hone in on and get laser-like focused on, for they loved human praise more than praise from God. So like, like the Pharisees, are, is anyone here, uh, are you afraid of what people might think of you if you don't go with the flow? Have you ever kept an unpopular opinion to yourself? I, I was watching a Civil War. It's a, one of the Marvel movies. And one thing I really appreciated is that Captain America, when, there, when he had an a unpopular opinion, uh, that he didn't... <laughs> Disclose, he, he, he didn't hold back. He told the other people what was going on. And so I, I wonder, uh, do you find yourselves doing things that you wouldn't normally do because you want to be liked or popular? Do you feel the pressure to, to live a, a certain way, maybe a certain lifestyle, or say certain things when you're around certain people? I know I, I, if, I, if I'm being honest with everyone, I've, I said yes to some of those questions, right? And if you said yes to any of, of those questions, the chances are you have a tendency to want to please people. And so trying to, to please people is normal, and living to please God is weird. And so Harriet Breaker, the author of a, the, the book, she wrote this book called The Disease to Please. And it talks about how uh, pleasing others is addicting. And she says there are four characteristics of people pleasers, and, and they are uh, people pleasers tend to take criticism personally. Uh, they have a constant fear of rejection from people around them. And they find it difficult to express their true feelings. And they have a reluctance to say no, even when it is clear they should. Do any of those hit home with you? I think we all wrestle with this uh, disease to please, as she calls this. And so because of this uh, wrestling with this, we often fail to see when we compromise ourselves to others. Many of us just see uh, uh, the need to please as a normal way of being, a normal way to live. And we have to be weird in this space. Weird so we don't care. I mean, kind of that tension, like you do care, but you don't care what people think of who we are and how we live. And I would argue that, that pleasing people is, is more of a spiritual problem than a relationship problem. Living for others' uh, opinions and pleasing them is putting people ahead of God. 
And so Paul said this in 1 Thessalonians, On the contrary, we speak as those approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. We are not trying to please people, but God. And so Paul, Paul said, said, said this, We have been approved by God to be entrusted with good news. And our purpose is what? What did Paul say our purpose was? Our purpose is to please God, not people. Becoming obsessed with what people think about you is the quickest way to forget about what God thinks about you. And the root of people-pleasing is it's cloaked in fear. Fear what they might think or say about us if we don't do or say certain things. One of the quotes that, that, that stuck out to me in my preparation this week was this quote right here, and it'll be on the screen. The fear of God is the only cure for the fear of people. And, and for me, the, just the word fear of God has always kind of struck me wrong until I actually found out what they're talking about when they say fear, Right? And so uh, in Psalm 34, 9 says, Fear the Lord, you, his godly people, for those who fear him will have all they need. Those who know God will fear him. And this is, uh, fear is in the best sort of the way. Uh, it's not like someone who ha has broken out of jail and, and God is, is hunting them down and running, running them down. It's not the fear like you are, are running a away. Or maybe some of you, the best way I, could, I found this illustration was uh, talking about God as a cosmic cop, uh, uh, trying to, to catch you, like when you break one of, of the commandments so he can throw you uh, in jail. And so if this is your concept of God, I, I would say if that's your concept of God, like fearing God makes all the sense in the world. But when I look at God, that does not reflect God's character. And if, you, and if you take time and do the study of the phrase fear of God, and you look at it in its original language, which is Hebrew, you discover that fear of God meant this, meant this reverent awe. It, in a sense, it's like a, a, you, just, you see something or witness something or someone does something, and it's like a divine wow. And, and I can resonate with like fear as a divine wow. And so sometimes I, I experience the, these moments when I, when I have overwhelming respect, appreciation, and gratitude when, I, when, I, when, I, when, someone, uh, when someone, I witness someone doing something or I, I sit out like in this beautiful scene of like God's creation. I, the other day uh, we were talking about, me and the girls were talking about the, the pink, purple, and orange sunrises. Like it seems every single morning has been just been this vibrant painting uh, outside our windows. And to me, that, that is a divine wow moment where the skies speak of God's magnificence. Uh, and then a, a couple of years ago, I remember when we went to Arizona and, and we sat on the edge uh, of the Grand Canyon and just the, the sheer beauty and grandeur and, and majesty of it made me go, ah, oh, and praise God. The, the breathtaking uh, view of, of, of Pike Peak of, in Colorado across like the Rainbow Valley where rainbows just seem to pop out of nowhere just makes me say, wow. And I wonder what your like divine wow moments are. Maybe you have a place where you just say, wow, or maybe it's a moment in your life where you've just been in awe of your surroundings. And I think if we, if we focus on that and, and the divine wow, like the possibilities of God will open us up. We'll, we'll see God as the artist who created these scenes. We'll see God at, who is the sustainer of the universe. We'll see God who is all-knowing, all-powerful, and ever-present. The same God who spoke everything into existence, knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb, and calls each of you by name. God, he is the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, and loves you deeply. He knows everything about you and loves you deeply. 
He knows every hair on your head. He sees every tear you shed. He is the great I am. He is a consuming fire. He is the rock, our shelter, our hiding place, our healer, our provider, our sustainer. God loved you so much that he stripped himself of all the, the divinity and all the heavenly glory to live as a Jewish carpenter so he could, could shed his blood, suffer and die for us, forgive our, our sins. He is a God beyond description. And the cool thing is, is that he loves each and every one of us. Pure, unadulterated love. God loves you. So why are we working so hard to be normal when God created us to be set apart? Will you please join me in prayer? God, today I, I thank you for those who are, are truly serious about pleasing you and not people. I pray, O oh God, that you would give them the, the courage and strength by the power of the, your spirit to fight the desire to conform to the norm. God, overwhelm them with a sense so that they can please you and they live for an audience of one rather than for people who change with the wind. God, I pray that they would be driven to please you above all else, and at the end of their lives, oh God, uh, you will, will, will say to this, they'll stand before you and you will look at them and you will say, well done, good and faithful servants. God, I, I pray that you give them the courage to follow the direction that the, you lead them to be their own type uh, of custom weird and, and, and encourage them because there is no cookie cutter type of weird. To be, God, I help you to encourage and give them courage to be different and to be set apart in the way that you call them to be. And I pray that others will be intrigued by them. And I pray that others will even ask them questions. Why are you so weird? God, in my prayers, that when this question is asked, that they may introduce uh, the, the, those that ask them the, this question, they may introduce loved ones to the weird life of following you and, and pleasing you alone, and it leads to more and more people being set apart so that we can glorify and honor you. Amen. At this time, we're going to pause before the, the offertory and the doxology, and uh, Kimberlyn is going to give the board update, and it will be on your screens. Good morning, Silver Lake United Methodist Church. I am Kimberlyn Yule, and I am here to give you our board meeting minutes from our Wednesday, January 26th meeting. Uh, we initially approved our minutes from our previous meeting in December. Uh, we also heard from Pastor Alex as he gave us his report. Um, he discussed worship and how he would like to see more of a congregational rhythm. Um, so looking at ways that we can um, get others involved in helping to lead worship. Also discussing um, the leadership abilities in our music to make sure we have a nice flow every Sunday um, as well. We also discussed Sunday school in which I will be putting a plug in for that. Um, we would love to see that we have uh, someone to help lead Sunday school every Sunday. So if you are interested at all in helping uh, to grow our young youth minds, please let me know as I will be helping to organize that every Sunday. Uh, so please, if you don't have my contact info, please get a hold of Pastor Alex so he can um, get you into the right direction. Uh, we also discussed um, Pastor Alex's ability to get a fruitfulness grant of five to ten thousand dollars through his transition and ministry project or program that he is in. Uh, but he would like to create a team of board members as well as other members of our congregation. And so please look for that to uh, be coming down the line as well to help come up with some ideas uh, and how to use uh, this particular grant um, for projects. Uh, we also had a financial report from Kathy in which she talked to us about our mission shares 
in which we were able to um, pay 10% of our money that came in this year to go towards our mission, which is uh, wonderful. Uh, we also looked at um, that we brought in uh, almost $1,400 for our Christmas Eve service that was um, split between our church and the Topeka North Outreach in which they were extremely blessed and thankful for that um, gift. Uh, we also um, looked at um, or and approved to get new faucets in the kitchen. So if you are one that is in our kitchen a lot, then um, look forward to those new faucets coming. Um, some other building things that we looked at, uh, we talked about replacing the carpet in the parsonage. Uh, we also looked at um, a new church sign and we've gotten some um, information on what we could possibly do for our new for our church sign to update it and we set a new cleanup date for march 26th so please look forward to that and mark your calendar so that hopefully you are able to come and help we also talked about um hopefully doing something with our front door lock and helping to make sure uh that it is working properly when um, anyone is needing to come in um also mike mitchell if he is really trying to help um, others to, or encourage others to want to um, set up our fellowship time. And if you are interested in doing that again, um, he is wanting to help organize that. So please see Mike if you are interested in fellowship time and um, being a part of that. Um, we also um, set our next meeting date for February 16th and um at 6 30 p.m and uh the other piece we talked about in terms of our pledges we had more pledges this year uh turned in than past years which is amazing so thank you so much for that and um the last but not least we would like to officially announce jane caper's retirement and thank her for everything that she has done for our church and her amazing musical talents so congratulations jane and we thank you so very much and uh, that would be your minutes from our January 26th meeting. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Thank you, Kimberly. I just appreciate her create creativity. I, it's cool when someone can use technology better than you can uh, and to see that out there. Uh, will you please uh, hear the offertory that Kathy is going to play? play? And, that, and this time, I, I just want to invite you maybe make a, a list uh, there's a pen or a pencil in front of you uh, on the pew in front of you maybe as she's playing the offertory and you prepare your offering for the for the offering box in the back maybe you uh, can think of like one way you can be weird in this coming week <laughs> Please stand and we'll sing the doxology.
Let's sing the, the closing hymn together, My Life is in You, Lord. announcement before the, the benediction is that most of you probably already know, but youth group is going to be at 1130 today uh, after uh, worship. Uh, and so I hope to see most of you then. Uh, but so please hear the benediction. Oh God, as we leave the, the, the church today, the place of worship today, wherever we are at, may our, our life be in you, may our hope be in you, and everything we do be uh, bring, be a way to bring you all the glory, honor, and praise. Amen. Amen.